The time has come in Australia for us to finally see kangaroos and koalas. We are at Cleland Wildlife Park. Now, I say it's the first time we're going to see them. We did see two, three technically kangaroos at the front in the car park. Oh, there's a mummy with a joey in her back. There's a joey! It's so, so cute. And they come, come up to us. Um, but we are going to be holding koalas today. We're going to so be excited. feeding scary emus, uh, feeding kangaroos, petting and... and Oh my God, it's going to be incredible. So and there's excited. so many animals here. Um, there's the map of the park. There's all the different types that we are going to be seeing today. Uh, this is what we've, other than me coming for the football, uh, this, this is, is what, what we've, we've come for. To see the wildlife that we do not see in England. The kangaroos, the koalas, etc. Oh my God. So excited. It's going to be cuteness overload. And I never thought I would say that in my life. Let's go around the wildlife park. You've got your food ready. I'm ready. Our first sights of kangaroos, there's three of them. Two brown ones, I would say, and one red one. Food's ready. There's more over there, there's loads over there. there. Oh, it's just loads, there's just loads. Okay, let's see if this one ha would like a little stroke and uh, some food. I think this one's a bit of an old boy. He looks like he's got a bit of a beard and gray hairs coming on. And he's slow. Oh. Here's the red one. I don't know if we're meant to be quiet around them. No? Not really fussed. We've got some food. I think more interested in the grass. Yeah, they do seem to be preferring the grass. Right, put some on your hand then. And see if he wants some. Come on, stick your hand out. They're not that scary, are they? Or maybe they are. <laughs> oh. Give him a little stroke on his head or his chin. All animals like their neck being scratched. Go on, be brave. Be brave. He wants some more. Give him a little stroke while you're feeding him. Oh, oh they're very him. soft. Here you go. A bit more. A little fatty. Here you go. The, the funny thing is, we're walking around like giddy little children with a little bit scared because, you know, they're quite big animals. But everyone else walking around here is so calm and casual, like it's just the norm. And <laughs> we're all giddy, like, oh my God, there's a kangaroo. Um, but they're such strange creatures, but so... Oh, man. Oh my god! <laughs> you want some more? There you go. There's some noise, isn't there? It's a noise. Oh my god. Oh my They're god. really soft, aren't they? They're so soft. Want some more? They are like the comfiest rug you can ever have. But I don't condone it, okay? God, that is like the softest thing I've ever felt and that made me a little bit nervous because he moved. <laughs> They're just so big. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm not... I love how they, where they've been eating grass all day, just around their mouths has turned green. Amazing, eh? I, yeah, you want more? Is this better than grass? Oh, I thought you were going to get grumpy with me then. That's all I've got. In to see some birds. Okay, birds are a little bit more scary, remember? They're not really, but... As long as it's not a magpie. As long as it's not magpies, because Charlie got swooped. And I will keep mentioning this. Okay, what do we have in here? I can't see anything at the moment. There's a little one down there. Oh, where? Amongst the bushes. Where? Where are you looking? In the bush. Oh, there you go. There's a little one. There's another one of them over here. One there. There's a couple. I don't know what they are. Okay. 
Okay, there's not many birds in here. Uh, but I feel bad because I'm less interested in the birds. The birds aren't exciting me as much. It's all about the koalas and kangaroos and the wallaroos and the wallabies. Wombat. And wombats, maybe. What about a little wallaroo? Here's another one coming. They're both coming to see us. We want food. Oh my god. Just so cute. Look at some food. Here you go. <laughs> Look at the Problem. camera. Your hand. <laughs> Here you go. Here you go. You come in. There's food. You're going to burn his claws on me. That's what Pixie and, and Astro do when they want food. They use their claws to bring my hand closer. Is that enough? Or do you want more? Oh my god, this is so cute. <laughs> I said this is exactly what the cats do at home. When they want you to bring their hand, your hands closer, they just put their, their claws on you. Are they as soft? Yeah, so cute. They're munching away. Do you want some as well? I make that noise as if it works. You want some more? You want some more? Come on then. Come on then, have some more. That's all I've got for you though. We've just come to the lake, or the pond. I didn't think pelicans were Look that big. Them. They're huge. I really didn't think they were that big at all. I, I think they're bigger than swans, aren't they? Especially they're much with, bigger than swans. But that's partly probably because of the mouth, the beak. No, but even the body, I think the body looks much bigger than a swan. I don't think I'd want to get too close to one, though. I'm not too keen on this bird bit. <laughs> <laughs> what about the ducks? They're, they're OK. That duck looks like a duck at home, so that's fine. I can be friends. Yeah, they're OK. They're in our ballpark. The first koala we've seen, and look at it, it's sleeping in the tree. Let's go have a closer look. Oh, there's loads in here. There's like one in every tree. <laughs> oh. Check this out. Up there in the tree. Just having a kip. A midday kip. There's going to be a common theme in a lot of these Australian videos that we're doing at the moment. And a lot of it is <sighs> lost for words, um, mesmerised, because it's just something we don't see and it's it's just incredible to see these creatures. They're just amazing. So we have got time to hold koalas later on, but before then, we can, might as well get a chance to give them a little stroke. I'm so excited. Oh, no. Do you want that one? Oh my God, up That's close. That's better, beautiful. If you would like to pat him, yep, just nice and low on his back and bottom. Don't go above here. Okay. Um, they don't like things around their faces because they don't have very good eyesight. And obviously I wouldn't like things around my face either, <laughs> no. to be fair. Nobody likes everybody patting them no. on the head. <laughs> so they also don't have very good eyesight, so that means that um, things coming towards his head freak him out a bit, but he has really super good sense of smell um, and a super good sense of hearing. All right, well, I hope I smell nice. <laughs> I did have a shower today, I promise. <laughs> it's only generally if people have really super strong perfume or something oh, no, you're that okay. really upsets them. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so he uses his sense of smell to smell along each branch and work out which leaves are the best leaves to eat because gum leaf is all toxic. So he actually smells along to work out which is the least toxic leaf and that's what he eats. 
Um, and they also get a bit fussy too. So as you can see here, there's a couple of different types of gum that I've got here. It's entirely up to him which ones that he would like to eat. They are like, I said the kangaroos were soft like a rug, <laughs> but this is like a sheepskin rug. And this is why over the years, there's been times where koalas have nearly gone extinct. Because yeah. you can imagine those oh, really? coats. Yes, back when settlers first came to Australia, they used to send beautiful koala fur back to uh, Europe. Yes. And you'd have to get quite a lot to make anything substantial, right, yes. I would assume? Yes, I would assume so, yes. So, especially because the koalas here compared to the koalas like in North Queensland are quite different. So this is a southern koala. There's only one breed of koala or species of yeah. koala. Um, but these guys are much bigger and much furrier. If you see a, a northern koala, they look very different. Yeah. You Google a photo and compare the two, you're like, Would that, that just simply like be koala. because of the heat? Yes, yep, they're it's hotter to up the there. heat. Yep. So they don't have a thicker fur coat. So these beautiful guys here, their coat is like insulation. So when it rains, they don't actually get wet to their skin. Um, it beads and all runs off. Yeah. So I stand out here and get wet with him uh, and he stays nice and dry. <laughs> and he doesn't care. He doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they've got the dark fur on the back so that in winter they can turn their back to the sun and absorb warmth. And then in summer they turn the white chest to the sun to reflect heat. Isn't evolution so fantastic? I know, right? It's incredible, it right? Is. How, how sure animals I'm adapt to their I'm not sure why you would adapt to only eat one thing that's oh. actually toxic. Yeah. Um, but, you know. Maybe because no one else can eat it. And that's what I reckon. So these guys' closest living relative is actually a wombat. So I reckon that they were all competing for food on the ground, ran out and some smart they thought wombat we'll go up. Uh, mutant decided they'd start climbing trees because nobody was eating the stuff up the top. <laughs> That's my theory anyway. No scientific fact to back that up, but it sounds logical to me. But yeah, so Samson's a beautiful boy. Um, just so, I, I keep saying this when we see the kangaroos, when we've seen, seen these guys, they're so different to what we get in England. Yes. And it's so like us. you a, do actually have a koala in England at Longleat? It was, yes, we live near Longleat. And, and it was in the not news, wasn't it? Had a baby. It was yeah, in the news came from all here. over. So that koala oh. came from here. We sent her over there, um, and I'm pretty chuffed because her baby. They've named the baby Hazel. That's my name. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely no reason for why that was done, but I'm happy that the the only koala born outside of Australia is Hazel. There you go. <laughs> you Whereabouts in Australia did it come from? Here. Actually here. Yes. Because so, it was all over our news. Yeah. So Cleveland actually sent the koala to Longleat. So we sent the koala from here to Longleat. Yeah, because it showed people from here actually going over there yes. as well. And, and we used to have to send gum over while they were getting their plantations sorted and stuff like that. So with koalas, even though there's about 40 to 50 types of gum across Australia that they will eat, yeah. they only eat certain ones within each area. So here they only eat about seven types. Um, so you can't just pick a koala up from here and move it somewhere else. You actually have to transition them to a different type of gum that's local in that area. So even though they had gum plantations over there, it wasn't that simple. But this is amazing, and it's and it's the same with um, pandas, for example. It's amazing how they are still, you know, because they're so fussy, right? Yes, right. And, it's, and this is like eating lettuce in terms of nutritional content. Not no, a Samson, lot. You're not going over there. <laughs> Samson, I think, that's might right. be done. He wants a cuddle. We've already got cuddle <laughs> later on, apparently. Yeah. So we'll get to actually hold the koalas later but now on the hunt for some dingoes look cute but apparently deadly and we've seen them straight away hold on we found them straight away look how cute he is or she is there's two in there just having a little I'm one in the other one. Oh my god see these are the most adorable creatures I think look at them because obviously they look so much like dogs I love their colouring if you're a dog person, I think these are the cutest dog type breed you can find. But you would never own one, right? Because they would rip you to pieces and yeah, eat you, probably. But they don't look much bigger than an average dog. No, they don't. But they're obviously wild, aren't they? I mean, they are behind two fences, so they obviously are um, quite dangerous. Yeah, they have got two fences, um, but they're just so stunning. I think. I think. Handsome is a good word for them, for the male ones anyway. Well, if it's a boy, that might be a girl. It might be a girl. The awesome thing about coming today is it's midweek, it's so nice and quiet mm -hmm. that you get to spend longer with the animals without feeling like you're rushed through and have to queue up to see. I was going to say, you're not fighting over animals to feed and things. There's no. There's so much space. But it is, um, there are so many animals to see. You know, all the different types of kangaroos going from big to small. The birds, 
I haven't seen the emus yet. Hang on, I might go see these kangaroos over here. There's more. I've got to, you know. You can never get a good, you can never get enough of a good thing, right? Here's a red. That is a lot bigger. I reckon Charlie would be too scared of that one. That is huge. Wow, really big. They're all over here just relaxing. Are you ready for this? We have found a wombat. Look at that cute little bugger. Oh man. Doesn't seem very sociable. Are they dangerous wombats? No? Not too dangerous. It reminds me of a pig. I think it looks like a cross between a pig and a guinea pig. Yeah, it's got piggy ears like and pig were. cheeks. I thought they were slightly smaller than this. When I think of a Tasmanian devil, I think of the cartoon. However, they are not like that at all. They don't look all. anything like it. Uh, I've seen a little guy fast asleep in a little burrow. Check this out. It might be quite hard to see because it's a bit dark in this little burrow. Oh, oh. he's got his eyes open. But I love that you can see the teeth coming out, like the fangs. The fangs. I think it looks more like a vampire, you know. Like a vampire bear. Yeah, a vampire bear. There you go. That is what is now going to be called a vampire bear. If someone calls you a bloody galah, oh, that was a brilliant accent. This is what they mean. This pink one is a galah. I don't know why I'm still saying it in an Australian accent. Look at it. Probably wants to go out and fly and be free. Hello. Hello. <laughs> So you think Godzilla is only in the movie and it's not real, right? Well, Godzilla's here. Godzilla is here. It's up there. Right up there. Whoa. Can you be quiet? I'm trying to film. Uh, right up there is Godzilla. So this guy is Mr. Cleland or his actual name, John Burton Cleland. Now he donated this land to the government as long as they kept it as a wildlife area and uh, I think they're doing a pretty good job because this place is bloody awesome. Uh, this is the section of the sanctuary that I'm least excited about and right here we have an eastern brown snake and this apparently you'd have about 20 minutes to get to hospital before you kick the bucket. I don't know why anyone would keep these as pets, honestly. Or at least just the reptiles in general. Here's more tiger snake. Where is he? Oh, there you go. No, thank you. Oh, I don't, I just don't understand why anyone would want them. Charlie's, oh, Charlie's making friends with the local children. Take a look behind there. Oh, I do not like Bull that. ants. Look at the size of those ants. We certainly wouldn't get any that size in England. Oh, I'm putting that back over. There are so many different types of reptiles and amphibious creatures in this building. Here, we've got the southern bell frog. And there's loads of different frogs in all these little, all these cabinets. So here we got the marsh frog. There's one right in the corner there, look. I don't... This one's huge. Oh, hang on. A cane toad. A cane... Ah, oh, yes. Check if you can see. All the way in the back there. It's quite difficult to see because of the red light. And they sort of camouflage quite well. But that is a big boy. A really big boy. Or girl. We've gone up a level. We've now got the olive python. Does that, um, do you like the olive python, Charlie? No, and it's just staring at me. 
in this one we've got the Gigi Skink, which you can see at the back, its actual tail is sticking out, but it almost looks like its head. And then you've also got the Peninsula Dragon, which are these little ones, one on the rock there and the one that's just sitting on the skink. But they look quite cute. I still wouldn't like to hold them, but they sort of look quite friendly and funny looking. Dum dum, dum dum, dum 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 dum. <laughs> uh, yeah, check this bad boy out. He is as cool as a cucumber. The rain has started coming down, so we thought we'd better come inside for some food. What have you gone for? Ham and pineapple pizza. Ham and pineapple pizza, and I've gone for a chicken, toasted chicken wrap. This Hang is on. so good. Mm. Very, very good. Mm -hmm. There's lots more kangaroos, wallabies, emus to see I'm after. I'm a bit scared about them. I thought Australia is meant to be sunny. We just had lunch because it was raining and it hasn't stopped, it's got heavier. It's absolutely dire at the moment and I wanna go see some more kangaroos. Where's the sun when you need it? Yeah, this umbrella that we've just bought became a bit of a necessity. <laughs> uh, it is solid rain now apparently, solid rain for the rest of the day. Who would have thought so in Australia? What's amazing about being here is that you've just got free flying birds, parrots, and there's a parrot over there, just chilling, having some food. The kangaroos over here are being sensible, hiding under the shelter, and I think we're gonna join them. Let's go and join them. Hello, Roos. Look, maybe you give, oh, sorry, with, I'm not that scary. Hello guys. Hello. They're a little bit nervous of me. Hello little ones. Oh. Ow. Oh. I thought I was the kangaroo whisperer. I don't think these little guys like the rain too much. He seems like he might be interested. That's not scared. Look at the ears. Go up to him and see if he wants food. He'll be fine. No. Go. <laughs> huh? Tomorrow. You're getting a bit wet, buddy. Go. Go. Nom nom nom. Good boy. Poor girl. Any more? Just more? We've just come in to the kangaroo's little cousins zone, the wallabies. There's loads in here. Hopefully they're just as friendly, but these are definitely cuter, right? Look yeah. at their little mousy faces. <sighs> okay, let's see if we can feed some, some wallabies. He keeps getting rejected by the wallabies. They just run away, so he's out in the rain for nothing. But he's not giving up. He just tries to find another one. I got one wallaby having a little nibble. Uh, they just all run away from me. I'm so sad. I, it's gotta be because of the rain and the hoods and the umbrellas and things. I'm so disappointed. Look in this little one, inside the pouch, you can just about see the moving about of a joey. It's so sweet. Oh, poor guys in the rain. Yeah. Just so she's got somewhere to climb. So she's going to do all the work here. Okay. 
I'm going to do some lifts. So she'll climb over to your shoulder just the way she climbs from tree to tree. So then when she's on you, just a hand under her bottom and around her back, nice and gently. Perfect. And she's got a fairly big mouthful, so she is ready to come to you whenever she's ready. There you go, Flossy. Nice and low on her bottom. Perfect. And just a little bit higher there on her back, maybe. There you go. Beautiful work. I'm just going to free your hair from her paws. Um, she brushes mine sometimes. It does not feel good. So now you can kind of lean your head into Fern, not Fern, Lawrence. <laughs> Two girls and they both start with an F. And lovely big smiles at Hazel back here. Looking at me. Good boy. Good girl, boss. Open that last one. What a perfect one. And you've got your, oh, there you go. You've got your professional set up. Is she cuddly? She is. Yeah. She's one of our cuddliest koalas. So not all of them like to sit in here and have a cuddle with a complete stranger. As lovely as you guys are, and, and um, we're would all you? here. You would, would you? No, I wouldn't either. If you guys asked me for a hug, I'm sorry, but I probably wouldn't. So it's like um, when you're a dog at home, you know, if you walked in and went to give someone else's dog a hug, they probably would be a bit unsettled. So we work with them very closely every single day, and the more we work with them, the stronger that bond um, is. So I've worked with Flo personally for about three years, full time. So she knows me quite well, and I know her quite well. It's like having four. I assume it's all about. Fit. They know that you're going to feed them. Yeah, they know, yeah. You know, they're, they know they're safe with you. Yeah, and she doesn't see very well, so we're all kind of um, very similar shaped sized blobs. Okay. Um, so they see a lot better at night, but she's got really, really sensitive hearing and a very sensitive sense of smell as well. So hence why Hazel and I don't wear loads and loads of perfume. Um, we also don't want to suffocate each other. <laughs> but, um, and we the always... <laughs> And the hearing thing is especially important. So we're always nice and we talk normally, but um, we're not shouty or yelly or anything like that. Um, big noises like big cars going past, um, the gates banging, those real sudden loud bank yeah. crashing noises um, can be a bit distracting. So it's important that when we hear as well, we're making them feel comfortable. They do have the nicest food to clean up every morning. Perfect. Eating right in my ear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. noisy <laughs> chewers. So just keeping that one nice and still, and then you can shuffle your feet around ever so slightly. Perfect. How old is she, did you say? At seven years. I'm so she is middle aged. So why do you feed her from a bottle? I thought that would be the sort of thing of. <laughs> that is the, the stuff. Just, yeah, okay. She's, She's like baby. our dog, basically. Yeah, yeah, basically. Because. So uh, some of them get a little bit, especially being hand raised from such a small I age. Want. She's quite. I want to sniff her. <laughs> you can have a little, maybe a little sniff at the back there on her little arm. She doesn't have very good eyesight, so she might be a bit bothered. Smells a little bit like farm. Farm. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what that no? smells like, apart from cow poo, but uh. Yeah, a little bit. We won't. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I don't know. I haven't been around animals for a long time, other than mine. She's a little bit wet as well, so she's got a bit of the wet dog smell going on. Maybe it's that. But she has an inbuilt raincoat, so the, the water will kind of settle on her. You might see she's got a few raindrops on top. She's got guard hairs, which I like to call it her built-in raincoat. So they'd probably be. Very so good. how? Obviously, she's a female, so I assume she's smaller. Yes. How big do the males get? Uh, the heaviest one I've worked with is about 13 kilos, so almost double her. That'd be enough um, to hold on that. Yeah, yeah, he was a book so, so she can put some people yeah. on the photos and get to that. Yeah. Yeah. So the heaviest one we use... What are you yeah. trying to say? <laughs> well, if someone like, if someone like, oh, no, I was like the 13-year-old kids. The mate and things. Uh, only once a day, whenever the female is in the season. Once a day. Oh, once a day. Once yeah. a year. <laughs> so say, run the I'm really back. tired. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was thinking, um, I was thinking, I was thinking they was, would be, si I was thinking they'd be similar to pandas. No, in, in, no, I, no, 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 I mean in, in their sexual desires. Um, I don't really, I don't work with pandas. They don't. Yeah, do. Pandas, pandas so, only mate once a year. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah, that's yeah. What I so these guys mate once, um, sort of in the, the summer months. So um, when it gets warmer, the females will start kind of bellowing. The population's when going up or down. Uh, do you well, think? after fire is down. Yeah, yeah, but, um, of course. They are kind of in a funny spot because they can breed quite well, um, but then of course if there's no trees to support those populations, or they're killing the trees. Because we obviously saw it all on the news over at Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see the half burnt koala and, and... Yeah, so I actually came from Kangaroo Island yeah. where they got quite badly hit by those fires. So how did you find 
the koala holding. Florence. Florence. Florence, Flo. Oh my God, actually probably the best thing I've ever done. That is an experience that you will never forget, right? I will literally never it's, ever um, forget that. The softest, softest, most gentle thing went well, as it's been brought up to be gentle, obviously. But wow, it's it feels like a sheepskin rug. And it's so soft. gorgeous little thing. And I had it next to me and it just well, it stank of eucalyptus for starters. <laughs> yeah. But it's just incredible. Um, now we're heading home now uh, because the weather is just awful, so we're gonna skip the emus. They're quite scary anyway. So um, if you if you haven't experienced a kangaroo, a koala, then this is the place to come. There are plenty. Um, it's a shame, obviously, the rain has hit us because umbrellas are trying to get through trees. Come back into view, Chaz. Um, we oh, we're getting lost again now. <laughs> um, that is an experience that is just... I'm so glad we did it. That, I said, that will live in our memories now forever because that was incredible. And we've got some lovely photos as well, which will be amazing. The trick is, be nice to them. Oh, hello, little guy. Uh, the trick is, be nice to them, the people, and uh, they give you extra. We got an extra photo, which is awesome. Um, ah, just... So good. We'll never forget this, you know. Uh, and, yeah, if you haven't done this, come, because... 100% worth it. 100% worth it. That one's got Joey. That's, oh, hang on, we might come back to you. Quick, come back in, come back in, Chaz. I'm trying to squeeze it. It's in. all these trees. The um, sadly, the Wallaroo came and went with the little Joey. Oh, it's awesome. Just all the little heads sticking out. Just incredible. So um, yeah, if you haven't been here, it's called Cleland Wildlife Park. Cleland Wildlife Park. What an experience, I said, we'll never forget. Thank you so much for joining us. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. And like always, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.